The top leadership classes for this third quarter, March 27th, April 3rd, 10th, and 24th at 7.30 p.m. The focus for this quarter will be on nurturing the spiritual gifts that were identified from taking the spiritual gift assessment. And the recommended reading for this quarter is The Gifts and Ministries of the Holy Spirit by Lester Sumrall. If you have any questions, please see those now standing. Join the United Covenant Churches of Christ, New York State Diocese, for their diocesan service, Friday, March 31st, at 7.30 p.m. The speaker will be Bishop Roberto Jamat. The service will be held at the City of Hope Greater St. Mary Church, 493-5 Monroe Street, Brooklyn, New York, 11212. Bishop James R. Chambers is the senior minister. All are encouraged to attend. Call unto me, and I will answer thee, and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. Mark your calendars and remember to join the United Women every first Saturday of every month, 7 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, 6 a.m. Central, as we connect across the nation and draw near to God in prayer. The number to dial, 712-432-0075 and use access code 502-676-POUND. Send your prayer requests and praise reports to women's ministry at unitedcovenantchurches.com. If you are able, assistance is needed to clean the palms in preparation for Palm Sunday. Join us here on Saturday, April 8th at 10.30 a.m. if you are able. For more information, please see anyone now standing. Mark your calendars and save the date. Get ready for a special prophetic wave experience on Friday, April 7th at 7.30 p.m. with none other than Archbishop Bernard Jordan. Hello, married and engaged couples. We are very excited to kick off our next book discussion selection, Laugh Your Way to a Better Marriage by Mark Gunger. With a blend of humor and honesty, together we will explore the work and skills necessary for a healthy marriage. Our future discussions will be held on April 8th, May 6th, and June 3rd from 12 p.m. to 2 p.m. in the Curtis Fellowship Hall. Remember, if only one of you can attend the session, we still want you to join us. We are looking forward to seeing a lot of familiar and new faces at the upcoming discussions of Laugh Your Way to a Better Marriage by Mark Gunger. Books can be purchased via Amazon.com or Barnes & Noble. For more information, email topmarriage at tpconline.org. Join the Top Community Development Corporation's Dove Initiative Domestic Violence Program for a teen dating awareness slumber party. This is a girls-only event for ages 14 to 19 on Sunday, April 9th from 10 p.m. to 6 a.m. at the Top Civic Center, 1098 Utica Avenue, Brooklyn, New York. Admission is free and there will be a DJ, games, giveaways, and girl chat. Bring your PJs, sleeping bag, and pillow. Oh, and there will be activities for parents too. Please register via Eventbrite at dove underscore teen slumber party dot eventbrite dot com men the cot executive committee proudly presents men's conference 2017 and we need you to save the date right now from october 12th to october 15th this year we'll be having a retreat from thursday october 12th till saturday october 14th at Spruce Lake in the Poconos. Oh, we will not be outdone. Men, this is our time to get away as brothers and spend time with God. Let's not let anything get in the way of that. We'll have workshops and devotion times planned throughout the weekend. Guest speakers will be announced shortly. And there'll be plenty of activities like trail hiking, waterfalls, paddle boats, zip lining, we can out done. Wall climbing, ping pong, pool, we can't done, basketball, 
dominoes, and some spades. Just to name a few. Now rates are going as low as 209 per person. Meals are included with the price. The first deposit is due on April 2nd. An additional deposit will be made on a monthly basis. The final balance will be due on September 10th. You can see those now standing to secure your position today. See you there, gentlemen. Thank you, thank you, thank you to all those that supported this year's women's conference in each and every way possible. If you dialed into the Wednesday night prayer line, if you attended Thursday night service, if you were in attendance at Crystal Springs Resort, if you came out on Sunday, if you came for early morning prayer, if you donated your time and or your finances of any amount, we thank you. The conference was a success because of you. Additionally, if you ordered a shirt or would like one, please be sure to see Sister Shayla after service and also know that a portion of the proceeds will be going to the Undergarment Foundation. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Deuteronomy 28 says that. Give a tenth, a tithe of your increase. The word tithe, when you look it up in the Hebrew, means tenth. I had one pastor tell me, he says, well, I tell my people it's okay to tithe 5% when they're getting started. And I said, well, that's okay, but don't tell them to tithe 5% because that's mathematically impossible. You can't tenth the 20th. <laughs> Just tell them to give an offering until they can get up to that point. It's a tenth. It's a tenth. That's 10%. Well, is it on the gross or on the net? I, did, I had a big theological awakening. I just figure I'm going to give on the big one, the gross. That way, if I get up there and I'm wrong, I'm okay. <laughs> Tithes and offerings are often used in the same sentence. The tithe is 10%. It's before you do anything. It's off the top. Offerings, though, are different. They're above the tithe and are freely given and typically given from surplus. People often quote, and I've even been known to teach on the widow's might, how the widow gave all. But that scripture is misused a lot to say that offerings should be given every time regardless of how broke you are. You're supposed to take care of your own household first or you're worse than an unbeliever. And that means you need to get your tail end out of debt. You'd be tithing off the top. But before you do a bunch of offerings above that, an offering that is not from extra excess money is unusual in scripture. Now I want you to go get you a bunch of extra excess money though so that the offerings go up. I don't want you to just cut everything off. That's not the point. But I have met people who are behind on their house payment, but they're current with the local ministry they promised to support. And that was not the church. That was an offering in a parachurch situation like that. And that is not biblical. That's backwards. You're supposed to take care of your own household first. Then you're going to get to those. If you'll do the steps we're talking, you get to do tithes and offerings. You're going to get there, I promise. And that's what this is about. The tithe is in the New Testament. Matthew 23, 23, Luke 11, 42, both say the same thing. Woe to you, scribes, Pharisees, and other miscellaneous jerks. For you give a tithe, a tenth of all that you have, and you neglect the weightier matters of the law, justice, mercy, and faith. You should be doing both. If you have a red letter Bible, that's Jesus talking. He says you should be doing both. And I, I know I'll tell you this, the people that win are giving. That's the bottom line. And whether you go by a tenth or whether you go by more than a tenth or whether you just give and you understand he owns it all and it ends up being a lot, I don't care. That's the spirit you've got to have. Never give with the motive of having your giving returned. If you give, it'll be given back to you. Yes, it will, but it's not necessarily money. Open for, test me in this, says the Lord of hosts, and see if I will not throw open the windows of heaven, it says in Malachi, and pour out for you a blessing that you cannot contain. And this is referring to the tithe. He promises a blessing you cannot contain if you tithe. But the word blessing, when you look it up in the Hebrew, does not mean BMW. <laughs> it doesn't say that. The word blessing in the Hebrew, if you look up the root word of it, means peace. When I was going through bankruptcy, I had one of these little blue-haired church ladies said, the only reason you don't have any money is you don't have enough faith. And I said, well, the only reason I don't have any money is because they took it all. And all I got left is faith. <laughs> so apparently that theology didn't stick, you know. But I'm not going to argue about that one either. The point is you can't lose by giving, can you? And, and we're getting into all these doctrinal hair-splitting contests, and I'm not going there. Bottom line is you can't lose by giving.